Welcome to the village of Pwai in the Isan region of Thailand, where women have been hand weaving silk for generations. The production of raw silk began in ancient China over 5,000 years ago and was brought to Thailand as the Thai Lao peoples migrated from their ancestral lands in southern China into present-day Laos and Thailand. They brought their knowledge of silk cultivation, dyeing, and weaving with them. In Laos, silk production has been falling into decline since the Second World War and has nearly disappeared. Not so Isan. Here, in the most resourceless region of Thailand, in homes transformed into workshops, artisans carry out the entire process of the fabrication of silk cloth, spinning, dyeing in natural colors, and weaving in artisanal looms. The days are rhythmed by the cadence of the petals and combs of the looms. Each piece is differentiated by its richness and variety of color. Isan silk is as precious as gold. Its motifs inspired by nature, Buddhism, birds, snakes, indicating at the same time prosperity, fertility, fortune. Weavers begin the process of rearing silkworms for the production of silk with the breeding of the Bombyx mori moss. The silkworm is one of the world's most genetically modified animals and by and large no longer exists in nature. It cannot fly and has no defense against predators. Weavers encourage the mating process by moving males and females closer together. The eggs are laid by female moths within 9 to 12 days. Eggs take about 14 days to hatch into larvae. The larvae are then placed on a bamboo tray and fed pieces of mulberry leaves. The tray is covered with linen and placed in the shade. The worms shed their skin four times during this stage, eating increasing amount of leaves as they grow. Between three weeks to a month, the tiny larvae have grown to about three inches and are ready to make cocoons. They are placed onto a flat, circular surface made of bamboo, which is embedded with successive ridges. Here, the larvae begin to envelop themselves in silk, creating a protective shield from the elements. After about two weeks, the entire bamboo cocoon wheel is covered with little yellow balls of silk. Once fully formed, they are stored in bamboo trays until they are ready to be cleaned of debris in preparation for spinning. One of the wonders of Bombix cocoons is that they are spun by the caterpillar in a single unbroken strand, which is bonded together by a protein called sericin or silk gum. They are placed a handful at a time in a pot of water, which is kept continuously boiling over a charcoal stove until some of the filaments from each cocoon start to unravel. A spindle is mounted on the pot. The weaver unwinds the tiny filaments from several cocoons at a time. As they are pulled around the spindle, they are spun together, creating a sturdy and durable silk thread. The silk gum must then be removed. At one time a laborious process, this is now done chemically. The result is a silk close to the color of cream. After the cocoon has been fully unraveled, the boiled silkworm is then eaten as a snack, leaving nothing to waste. Silk yarn in northeastern Thailand is dyed before it is woven. For generations, they use vegetable dyes produced from the materials collected from the forest and surrounding areas. Coconuts produce brown dye, indigo produces blue, jackfruit tree leaves produce yellow, etc. The substances are soaked in water for a day to extract the colorant and then the solution is strained of solid matter. The threads are then placed into the dye, making sure that every thread is completely saturated. This dye bath is then set to boil over a fire for about an hour. The threads are often turned over during this time to ensure complete saturation. The weavers of Ban Pwai provided a demonstration of many of the natural dyes found in and around the village. Kang is the inside lining of a tree that produces a red dye. An Chan flowers make an indigo dye. 
by themselves, these flowers also produce a silver dye. When the dye is boiling, vinegar is added to make a deep purple. Ma Kua is an edible fruit that grows on trees. The silk is soaked in a slurry of mash berries and left to bake in the sun several times until a jet black is obtained. Kenya is another inner part of a tree that is traditionally used to make monk silk robes. The inner bark of K tree produces a highly valued light golden dye so sought after that it has been over harvested. At present, it can only be found in Surin, a province that borders Cambodia. Although natural dyes can produce silk in vibrant colors, such fabric fades with repeated washing. Chemical dyes were introduced to the Thai silk weaving industry by Jim Thompson in the late 1940s. This helped the silk farmers and weavers compete with Japan and Europe, producing for them a more stable income and allowing many to continue their craft. The region of Isan is most known for its mudmi silk. It is a form of resist dyeing of the silk threads before weaving occurs. This technique results in amazingly intricate patterns woven right into the fabric. To achieve a specific pattern in the fabric, threads are dyed in groupings. These groupings are stretched onto a frame. The areas that must resist the dye, that is, the portions of the threads that are not meant to be dyed, are tied off with plastic. Thus, if the threads are first dyed in a golden color, and then portions are to be dyed red, the part of the thread that is to remain golden must be covered in plastic to, quote, resist the red dye. If another color, say blue, is part of the pattern, then the portions that are to remain red and gold are covered to resist the blue dye. As the process continues, a pattern begins to emerge. Isan weavers use foot treadle floor looms. These are made with metal frames, PVC pipe for some of the beams, and treadles made from a variety of poles, including bamboo, attached by thick rubber straps. Conceptually, weaving is a simple process of interleaving weft or horizontal threads between warp or vertical threads, which are attached to the loom. In practice, just warping the fine silk threads onto the loom involves a number of steps. It is a time-consuming and highly skilled process. The weft or horizontal thread is passed back and forth between the warp or vertical thread by hand using a plastic shuttle containing the warp thread on a spindle. Isan weavers constantly change the weft threads which have been tied using the Munmi technique to achieve a specific pattern. Although Munmi fabric is typically 2 meters long, weavers in Isan warp sufficient thread on the loom to weave 10 meters of fabric or more. They then weave 2 meters with a particular Munmi pattern, then another 2 meters with a different pattern, and so on. And now, introducing our stars, without whom this documentary would never have been possible. Mr. Swan Thongworn, demonstrating the growing of silkworms and weaving techniques, learned to weave at the age of 12. Mrs. Ryan Thongworn, demonstrating the breeding of moths, spinning of the cocoons, and mud me dyeing, learned to weave when she was 40 years old. Mrs. Sayan Samran Suk, demonstrating natural and mudmi dyeing, learned to weave at the age of 52. Mrs. Jia Nen Sang, demonstrating mudmi weaving, learned to weave when she was 40. Ms. Sabi Nen Sing has been weaving since she was 18 years old.